wow, this is total crap. They just finished an awesome game in the DO-17Z, and according to the metrics here, it's going to take 50 more battles to reach specialist status. Oh, and I also got some salvage, too, because I happened to win it. Ugh. Well, here we are back in the Zeppelin hangar with Warplanes 2.0.5. Now, I would like to build off of my little intro piece there, and let's just knock this uh, elephant in the room right out of the park right now. This video is my sequel to my initial review on 2.0.5, because I can't allow a review that scathing cynical and negative, even though it was honest, to sit without a suggestion on how things could be better. Because honestly, done properly, this patch would have been awesome. But instead, several things were done in a weird way, and we ended up with uh, the patch for this game that should have ended up in... Uh, that would have been the reality in, say, Bizarro World. So, the first elephant I'm going to knock out here is the specialist status, which is what my opening gripe was in that small clip. That battle in the Dornier 17 took three battles to achieve. The first two battles I played earned me absolutely nothing uh, in either equipment modification pieces or advancement in specialists because of the stupid requirement that you have to win in order to advance. Well, that's, that's dumb. That has to go. But that, that's, a, that's bound up in the, in the flaw of the entire concept of a specialist aircraft as it stands right now. So here is my proposal to fix specialist, but leave specialist status in the game as something that can be strived for. Okay, here's what you do. On every aircraft in the game, regardless of tier, all these locked pieces are unlocked. Those slots are available to use immediately when you research and buy the aircraft stock. Because let's face it, giving the more advanced and experienced players an additional advantage over the new player that just acquired the aircraft is completely unnecessary. They already have the greatest advantage over the new player. That's experience. You're going to be fl they're going to be flying better. They're going to be using better tactics. They've got better knowledge of their own aircraft as well as every other aircraft that's in the game. Why give that experienced player another leg up over the rookie? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm titling this video a modest proposal with a tongue in my cheek because this entire patch is causing or will cause, in effect, the devouring of children. Our new players being eaten alive by the experienced ones who already have all their stuff. So to counter that, every aircraft, premium or tech tree, has to have all of these unlocked immediately when you acquire it. Specialist no longer has anything to do with how you can modify and improve your aircraft. Instead, what Specialist is going to do under my proposal is change a tech tree aircraft into a premium aircraft economics-wise only for the amount of experience it brings in and the amount of credits it earns. It still is a tech line aircraft and cannot be used as a, uh, a free trainer for your pilots. It still would require to have its own specially trained crew in order to use the crew abilities to full effect. But, for the amount of uh, credits it brings in, and the amount of experience it generates, a specialist aircraft under my proposal would function exactly like a premium aircraft of the same tier. And I think that's really doable. Uh, that would allow uh, Wargaming to continue to sell the specialist status for aircraft, and it would make it something desirable to achieve. But it wouldn't make the trial of reaching that more difficult than it should be by having to do it, pursue that mission with an aircraft nerfed down from its full capabilities. So that is what I believe should be done with Specialist. Uh, the requirements themselves have their own issues. 
Uh, for example, this is a big gripe of mine with the German bombers, that they are required to destroy enemy aircraft, and that is player uh, enemy team aircraft only. Air defense aircraft don't count towards this total as it stands right now. But I believe that this right here, for German bombers at least, just needs to be removed because their gunners are not meant to destroy enemy aircraft at all. If, if, if you have an occasion where you can take an enemy aircraft from full health to shot down with a German bomber, the enemy pilot really had no idea what the heck he was doing because he could have shot you down three or four times over in the amount of time it's going to take you to shoot him down with your single machine gun. It doesn't matter if it's a 792 or a 13.1 millimeter. So the destruction of enemy aircraft just needs to be removed from that. The uh, uh, the victorious battles up here. This right here is why the, the, the capture points up here is why this right here is so egregious in the amount of time it takes. Uh, in my example, I played the game for a half of an hour, uh, just a little over, in order to get that one victory to get this bit of advancement I got here. So by that metric, let's assume that I get a little bit better uh, luck with my team distribution and uh, my team doesn't uh, turn out to be a bunch of waterheads and they actually manage to uh, help me with a 50-50 uh, uh, win rate thereby allowing me to progress. Uh, that would still take, by my math, over 15 hours of continuous play in order to take a Tier 4 aircraft into specialist status. So I'm, I'm very much in favor of the specialist status being advanced, uh, whether you win or lose, because if you're putting time into the game, you should be rewarded for it. And Wargaming can still uh, get their dollars on the side by people who are impatient and want to get that premium status for their favorite tech tree aircraft right away and they just want to hand over the money for it. That's fine. You can leave that in there, but uh, right now, having, having the pay-to-win status of forking over for specialist uh, as it stands right now in 2.0.5 is unacceptable and completely against how games should work. Uh, in Wargaming, uh, the Wargaming Trilogy. Uh, now let's go over to the consumables. This right here is another big sticking point with me. Uh, the consumables need to be reworked so that everyone has their three choices again. But now, I was reminded of something when I looked at this uh, at first the other day. When you rework it this time, why don't you give every aircraft one slot, just one slot in their consumables that can be used for embellishment. You've even given its own category here. You, why don't you just call this useless stuff? Because no one in their right mind is going to use it when they can put something that has an actual combat effect in that slot instead. So, give us an embellishment consumable slot. And people will begin to use that stuff and you'll see the fun things uh, going off in battle instead. You'll see the smoke trailers going off behind aircraft. You'll see the sparklers on their wings. You'll see fireworks, rockets being fired off. When is the last time any of you watching this video or reading this review saw any of these embellishment consumables used in combat? I'm willing to bet most of you have never seen one of those. Aside from that, return the two slots that have been removed from the low-tier aircraft give every aircraft in the game at least three consumable slots to be used for combat-rated consumables. And free up those slots so that we can put them in the order that we are accustomed to, instead of locking them down. That will take care of the issue with consumables, although there is there is one thing that struck me as kind of funny, that uh, the high-octane fuel has been reintroduced into the game after, after it was removed by Wargaming for being patently overpowered and broken, 
Now, they arrived at that conclusion because absolutely everybody was using the high-octane fuel. This was back when high-energy fighters like the German 109s and the BF 110s and the other heavies, uh, like the P-38s, uh, were the driving meta of the game prior to 2.0. It was way prior to 2.0. But absolutely every one of those airplanes was using that consumable. Therefore, Wargaming decided, well, you know, this is way too useful. We've got to get rid of it. Now it's back with no explanation at all. So if you want to put that back into the game, that's fine. But just be aware that, you know, this was something you were aware of was a problem a year, two years ago. But it's not a problem now. Think that one through carefully. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the uh, equipment themselves. Uh, on my bomber here, I did break down and get the stock uprated engine because the first battle I took this thing out in, it was completely naked. Uh, I just wanted to fight the system and see how it would perform uh, without anything on it. And uh, sad to say, I wasn't surprised when my bomber performed like uh, warm dog crap. So in the second battle, I equipped the uprated engine so I could get some more engine uh, engine power up at altitude and to try to counter that I mounted the fire extinguisher to counteract the increased fire chance from the uprated engine and then I got intercepted by an enemy BF-110B and the first grazing hit knocked out one of my engines. Wouldn't have been a problem when I had three consumables but locked to one that's a serious issue and then the BF-110 just kind of hung out behind me while I tried to defend myself with a single machine gun and just completely wrecked my world with his 220s and assortment of 792s on his nose. Uh, it was it was very sad. I, I He was stalling out behind me. I had a good 15 seconds of continuous fire on him. Didn't cause any critical damage. Didn't injure his pilot. And the moment he managed to, to get his speed up and get his nose on me, uh, I was done. And that, I think, is pretty representative of what I have to look forward to in the future playing the DO-17Z as it's currently configured right now in this terribly underpowered state. For the equipment improvements, here's what I suggest, because Wargaming has made the mistake of actually selling this gear for money now, so they can't make a large change to it without uh, offering some kind of compensation. What I suggest that would fix my gripes and most of the community's gripes with what has happened here is immediately you get rid of all the negatives. All negative aspects of all pieces of equipment, gone. No need for research. There's just a base level of the equipment that you can buy for every slot that will do a specific thing without having a specific negative to go along with it. And then... If players want to improve that equipment and get it to the elite levels that uh, that you supposedly can grind to right now, yes, you can do that. Have the, uh, have the salvage operations in battles, and after the battle is over, you get your salvage equipment, and then you can use that to RNG grind your way up. Uh, get rid of the RNG factor of the, what's it called here, the calibration and tuning. Yeah, more options. Yeah, calibrate and enhance. Get rid of the RNG aspect of those two things and just make it a set amount of credits and equipment that's needed to research the improvement. And when you have it, you can do it. What's so difficult about that? Why does RNG have to play a factor in that? To extend the amount of time people are spending playing the game? Guess what? If you make the system good, and you make the game itself fun to play while you're grinding this out, the rest of the math will take care of itself. Make the game fun and people will play. Not force people to spend inordinate amounts of time grinding on an arcane, obtuse system in order to hopefully get some kind of reward out of it. I think I know which one will have the better results. Uh, finally, uh, on the uh, salvage equipment, remove 
the win requirement. Reward wins by giving more salvage, but if you've just spent a battle working as hard as you possibly could for the win, and you don't win because this is a team game and your team absolutely sucked, it really is terrible to go, it's a terrible feeling to go back to the hangar and get, you know, not only, you know, reduced credit and experience income for the effort you put into the last 15 uh, to 12 minutes, but also to get no advancement on the equipment you're trying to grind, give them something. Wargaming, if you seriously consider any of these modest proposals to this overhaul of the game, I believe you'll find that your community will respond to it positively, and the enthusiasm that you probably expected to have for this patch will suddenly materialize. I hope someone who has authority and the ability to make change listens to this or has this translated for them. And I think everyone else in the community feels the same way. Good hunting.